Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. With full heart and full voice, let's sing together number 723 in the music issue, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King, number 723. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. After a wonderful three-week vacation, it's really great to be back. Still a ways to go, but I'm on the way. I'm no longer contagious, so you don't have to worry about that, but I'll try to stay away from people as much as possible. And at communion time, I hope we have some extra extraordinary ministers that can step forward. As we gather tonight, we celebrate the Feast of Jesus Christ the King. The readings remind us that one day we'll all have to appear before him and give an account of our lives. And so we ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us our sins now and to help us to remain faithful to him as we continue our journey through life. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. Right hand. 
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed, I will bring back. The injured, I will bind up. The sick, I will heal. But the sleek and the strong, I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will set upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cured me, in prison you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did he see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for the least of my brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty 
or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. This being the last uh, Sunday of the church's year in the Feast of Christ the King, the gospel focused our attention on the last judgment, reminding all of us that no matter who we are, one day we will have to give an account of our lives in the presence of God and the presence of others. And it's important for us to think about that from time to time. The last uh, three weeks I did a lot of thinking about that. Um, while I hope I never have to go through the experience I've been through with the virus these last three weeks, and I hope if you haven't had it that you never have to, uh, it certainly was a time for a lot of serious reflection and prayer. Um, until three weeks ago, my day normally begins about 5.30 or quarter to six in the morning. I spend about 45 minutes praying the divine office, the prayers of the priests and deacons and bishops and popes pray every day. Have breakfast, celebrate the Eucharist, and then from 9 o'clock until about 8 or 9.30 at night, I usually had people uh, throughout the day and doing all sorts of things. And I've always had a lot of energy, and I'm always looking forward to the next day and uh, doing even more. But the last three weeks, uh, it was just an effort to stay alive. Um, totally exhausted. It's amazing how even the simplest things when you're down just seem so monumental, you don't think you'll be able to do them. One of the side effects of um, the virus is that you can't taste anything. And uh, that was a unique experience for me. I knew I had to eat. People brought a lot of good food. I recognized some of the food just by, uh, well, those people brought it before and it's so good. And I'd have to um, almost force myself to try to eat some of it. I'd put some in my mouth and then hope I wouldn't gag until I could swallow it. I knew I needed the energy, but there just was nothing there. And uh, a horrible experience. I know this Thanksgiving, one of the things I'll thank God for is the fact that I can taste food. It's one of those things when you're healthy, you just take everything for granted. Once you don't have it, you suddenly realize, wow, how blessed you are. And then I realize there are some people who go through life never being able to taste food. They eat because they know they have to, but Wow, how blessed we are. So just one little thing I learned. Um, I realized how valuable sleep is. Those who had it told me you need your rest. I try desperately to sleep every night, and even today I only get about maybe two hours at night, if I'm lucky, and half of that is just walking back and forth between two different bedrooms, trying maybe to think the other place will make me sleep better. Totally exhausted. I'd be so easy to fall asleep. And yet, no matter how hard I try, I couldn't do that. So just a lot of lessons I've learned over the last uh, three weeks. And I think eventually, when I feel completely better, I'll look back and uh, see it as a very important learning experience. There were several days when I really didn't care if I lived or died. In fact, I thought it'd be easy to check out. And looking ahead to two or, four, two or three more weeks of this, I was almost unbearable, the thought. Um, but I'm over the hump. I'm beginning to see light at the end of the day, and I think I'll be much more grateful to God for my health uh, once I get it back. Um, and certainly it's been a time of a lot of prayer. Uh, one of the sad things is I've been in the area for so long, I know so many people. I'm looking at the telegram every day or looking at the funeral um, homes, uh, the obituaries, so many people in the last few weeks that I've known for years uh, died and were buried, and I wasn't able to be there or be a support to them or be a support to their families. And that was very hard. Uh, but I assure all those people of my prayers. Um, 
So I just learned an awful lot of lessons um, from this virus, and I will appreciate my health all the more uh, in the future. Um, and it made me realize how fragile our life really is. You can be healthy one day and you can be checking out the next day. So we never know. So the lesson, the readings and the message of Jesus throughout the Gospels is we have to live each day as best we can, knowing that it could well be our very last day. And knowing too that when these days are over, we'll have to give an account of our lives. So maybe we'll try a little harder to live them in accord with the teachings of Jesus and then to try to put into practice in our daily life what we've heard. And so um, thank God for the gift of your health. It's one of the most precious gifts you have. Thank God for his love for you and for all he's done for you. And ask him to live each day as best you can so when that final day comes, you'll be ready and eager to give an account of your life to the Lord and he'll be there to welcome you into the joys of his kingdom. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you sent your Son Jesus to be our Savior. May we always honor him by the way we live our lives so that one day he will welcome us into the joys of his kingdom in heaven. Grant us this, Lord, in the favors we ask in Jesus' name. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Lucas, Bishop Hannafeld, and Bishop Conley, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who serve us in public office, for President, members of the Senate and House of Representatives, our Governor, our state and local legislators, that especially in this time of crisis, they will strive to work together for what is best for our country. We pray to the Lord. For all parents and teachers, that they may always strive to reflect the love of Jesus to their children every day by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially Dave Bohiba, Dick Godowski, Emilian Eckholt, Mary Gock, Phyllis Hansen, Jim Jacob, Douglas Kilham, Kelly North, Mark Mysick, Arlene Miller, Carrie Ann Pinkerman, Mark Sullivan, and for all those who are afflicted with the coronavirus, that they may experience God's healing presence and power, we pray to the Lord. Yeah, for all of our departed loved ones, especially for Joanne Arney, Victor Jorez, Mary Lou Kuhneman, Virgil Kuta, Frank Laska, Geraldine McCowan, Bill Neal, Bernard Nitsch, Carol Sand, Richard Zimba, that they may jo know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our nation, that they will accept the results of the election peacefully, and that Democrats and Republicans Republicans will work together for what is best for all people. We pray to the Lord. 
Now let us pray for all parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. For which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. There is a second collection today for human needs to help people who are struggling these days. The ushers will empty the baskets and then they'll put them out at the end of Mass. If you can make a contribution, you're welcome to do so. be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash me, Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow in all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as the eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of the human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your pace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Having received food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, 
that I, by glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. Thanksgiving Thursday, we'll have Mass at the regular time, 10 minutes after 8. Uh, if you'd like, you can bring a loaf of bread or some baked buns or whatever and a bottle of wine and place them on the steps around the altar. We'll bless them at the end of the Thanksgiving Mass. And then you can take them home and use them at your Thanksgiving dinner. And in so doing, maybe make the connection that just as Jesus is present here in the Eucharist and the altar under the form of bread and wine, He's present in your homes whenever you gather around your dining room table together and share food and his love with one another. Also, I would encourage you to bring uh, non-perishable foods, uh, supplies, canned goods, things like that, that we'll take to Simon House and the food pantry. We have a lot of needy people these days because of the virus. So if you can do that, bring the food and put it in the baskets uh, that'll be in the North Rex after Mass. Uh, there, there always is a special collection today, so on your way out, if you want to contrib contribute, uh, you can drop your money in the, the basket. It goes to serve the needy in our community. There's also the giving tree back there. It has a bunch of stars or whatever on it. You can pick one of those stars, and it tells you what type of items a particular family needs, maybe clothing, maybe uh, toys or whatever. You've done this before. We've had a wonderful turnout. It's not just here at our parish, but the whole Columbus community. And it's amazing. We serve something like five or 600 families every year and help them have a, a happy Christmas. Uh, the church office will be closed on Thursday and Friday. Um, the quilting ladies have a wonderful bouquet back there. Um, you can do some Christmas shopping tonight after Mass. So drop by and uh, spend some time there. They have so many wonderful items I'm especially grateful to all of you for your prayers, uh, the countless letters I received from all over the country. One of the first uh, phone calls I received on Monday after I collapsed here at the altar and made a big scene was from Arizona. I received letters and cards from all over the country. So it's amazing how we're reaching out to others in this mass and what a privilege and a wonderful opportunity we have. I am especially grateful to our secretaries, Kathy Wright and Mary Peterson, for the wonderful way they've managed the office the last three weeks. They practically run the parish, and I really don't know if I have a job here anymore. But I am truly grateful to them for uh, them and to all of you for your concern, your prayers, your gifts, your cards. I feel so very blessed. Uh, pray especially for people who don't have a lot of support as I do, who are confined to their homes, uh, who are going through this awful ordeal. Let's stand now and make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to, be, to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is over. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth singing number 721 in the music issue. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus. Number 7. Two, one.
Today's morning mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.